I bring you greetings in the matchless name of my Lord God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hello, this is Reverend Bob Lico, and today I am bringing you, a, I believe, rather prophetic. It's, it's certainly based on uh, a prophecy that we see in the book of the Revelation that we'll look at very briefly. But what it has caught my mind recently, in the last, really, three or four days, are the following recent headlines. Now, I have seen the coming of the legalization of psychedelic drugs on a global level, and I've covered this. If you go to the Honey Badger Bob YouTube channel, you'll find almost half a dozen presentations dealing with psychedelics specifically. And I kind of felt a little embarrassed because I, I seem to be missing the forest for the trees. I was seeing the legalization of, of psychedelic drugs globally going on right now as we speak. But what I wasn't paying attention to or wasn't focusing on was the underlying push for the legalization of all drugs not just things like alcohol or cannabis or psychedelics, but actually the legalization, or deregulation, I guess, if you will, decriminalization would be the first step, of course, of all drugs. Now, what I've noticed is that the restraints of pharmacaea are now being loosened. If you do a little Google search, you'll notice that pharmakeia is one of the most searched Bible terms today. Isn't that interesting? Why do you think the church and the world is suddenly interested in looking into pharmakeia? Well, we know, and I know, that it is through this specific avenue that our enemy, that's the devil and all of his demonic forces and ungodly wicked men and women who are on his side willingly and volitionally, who know what they're doing, who serve our adversary with all the zeal and love and devotion that we have for our Lord Jesus, horrible as that is. There are people like that. And they are being used by the enemy in concert with him to bring about a global deception. We see this in the book of the Revelation, chapter 18 and verse 23. The text in, in context is about a restored and a revived Babylon, which can be an actual location of a city, or certainly a cultural zeitgeist, or the spirit of an age is that of Babylon. Here's what the text says, beginning of verse 23. And the light of a lamp will shine in you no more. And the voice of the bridegroom and bride will be heard in you no more. For your merchants were the great ones of the earth. And all nations were deceived by your sorcery, by your pharmacaea, by your pharmaceuticals which is, of course, where we get the word pharmacy from. Now, here is a commentary from the uh, internet, BibleOrg.com. This verse implies that Babylon was a city of sorcery in the past, certainly was. The Greek word for sorcery is pharmakeia, from which we derive the word pharmacy most likely. The sorcery of the end times Babylon will include drug production and trafficking, substances such as illicit drug control and enslaved people, making them easier to manipulate. The beast city of Babylon will likely be a bastion of drug addicts and dealers. All versions of sorcery will be ended when God destroys Babylon. Amen. Well, until that day, we are going to see a proliferation 
of not just psychedelics, which I find really the, the core of this text. It's all drugs, obviously, that are used for the purpose of spiritual knowledge, insight, advancement, or contact. Just because you go out and you use a drug doesn't make you a sorcerer. That's if you go out and get high. It may make you very foolish. It may make you someone being led of their flesh. It doesn't necessarily make you a sorcerer. Now, it can certainly deceive you, enslave you, and take you to hell. But in context, all nations were deceived by your sorcery. And I think that really has a lot more to do with the use of psychedelics that bring you in direct contact, as I've talked about and will talk about in future broadcasts, with fallen entities and enemies. It's not just pure drug use or in, impure. Just using drugs does not make you a sorcerer. Using them for spiritual reasons most certainly does. Now here are some recent headlines as of today, the third month of this new year, 2022, and the 14th day of this month. Here we go. And I want you to pay attention to certain terms that are now being floated out. And this is just the first, oh, I don't know, 15 headlines. Now I have well over 150 regarding psychedelics. So it always starts small. Pay attention to these little obscure headlines that appear way not on the top fold or the bottom fold of the paper, but inside under the obituaries or by the stock tips or under the astrology section, some obscure part, you'll see a little couple paragraphs. But these things are steadily moving through our communities, local governments, state governments, national, federal governments, and global governments around the world. First headline, drugs, the dark web, and distributing safe supply in hopes of saving lives. Now on the dark web, as we all know, if you've been on the internet more than uh, six weeks, there is a dark web. There's a web within a web. There are websites that are not generally found, you're not gonna find them on Google, but if you know what words or numbers to type in, you will be brought to unnamed websites, at least only known amongst a subculture. It's called the dark web. And there are all types of browsers, the Tor browser and other browsers you can get that will take you to the dark web and won't uh, track your, your business transactions. We know on the dark web, anything happens. Everything from child uh, trafficking, the selling of human slaves, sexual services, all manner of any drug that you can imagine, you can buy on the dark web and have sent to your home, delivered to you by your good local postman. Uh, and now though the dark web is trying to clean up its act because a lot of these websites when they're discovered are rightly and appropriately shot, shot down, shut down, and the people running them go to jail if they can catch them. But the dark web and distributing safe supply in other words, the drug dealers online, we have some ethical drug dealers and they're only on the dark web because of the uh, moss-backed legislators who are not hip to what's happening in the world today. But we're providing a safe supply. That means we're selling drugs that are not adulterated with fentanyl or you name it, anything else. And we do this in the hopes of saving lives. No, we're not in it to make money. We're not in it to uh, just become profiteers off other people's addictions. And we're trying to provide a safe supply. All right, next article. Island MPs trying to get across. Now, these are the members of parliament trying to get across a sense of urgency around a decriminalization bill. This isn't talking about decriminalization of marijuana or of psychedelics. This is a decriminalization bill of all hard drugs. 
And they're trying to get this sense of urgency across to their fellow legislators that we need to decriminalize all hard drugs. Well, why? Because they're having a lot of drug overdoses and deaths in this area. And this is moving the decriminalization, which always, as we'll see at the end of this presentation, a few minutes, leads to legalization. And it's always, and this is the path that it will follow, the same that followed for cannabis. Although I would, I have no problem with the legalization of cannabis and the medical use, especially of cannabis. It does have proven medical uses, fine. But what happened is, well, there are a lot of people in jail for something they shouldn't really be in jail for. Well, that was true. It has medical reasons that we know medically cannabis did. We've known that from the 60s, late 60s. They knew it was good for glaucoma. In the 70s, they understood it was good for the wasting diseases, cancer treatments, nausea. You know, all of these things become known. But it starts off with kind of a moral issue, kind of a social issue. Then it's a medical issue. And then it's good for people. As long as it's good for people, then we can really get the ball rolling on anything if it's if it's healthy. That's the big push on psychedelics, as I've proven. It's healthy. It's good for you. It helps you. It gets you free from racism and depression and suicide and addictions to other drugs, blah, blah, blah. So they're trying to get this sense of urgency around a decriminalization of hard drugs bill. And it will pass. Number three, a look inside the first safe injection sites. And this is in Boston, in the United States. So we now have the first safe slash legal, they didn't mention that, injection site. What is an injection site? Well, when I grew up in the 60s and heroin was the big scourge of the uh, ghettos and inner city. We used to call them shooting galleries. That's where people would gather, buy their heroin, rent a syringe or be given a syringe, shoot up, not out there. If they died, they just tear, kick, took you out, dumped you in the alley back somewhere, put you in somebody's van and drove you down the street to another neighborhood and rolled your body out there. Uh, safe injection site in America folks there is a place where drug addicts can go sit down not be subject to police harassment any sort of legal jail time or anything else they can sit there in this little oasis and shoot up their drugs I don't even know currently how that's even how that's even permissible considering the current state of the laws regarding these are all schedule one highest penalized drugs talking about heroin methamphetamine cocaine uh, these type of highly addictive abuse drugs are all schedule one drugs and how you could legally go sit down and, and just shoot up something you had to have purchased illegally from someone of questionable purity and the police are there okay next article decreasing opioid deaths not with abstinence but with harm reduction decreasing opioid deaths not with abstinence but with harm reduction that's a buzzword. Harm reduction means clean drugs, clean needles, clean place, safe place to shoot up or use drugs. That's called harm reduction. Passing out clean needles is harm reduction. Now they've just given up abstinence, decreasing opioid deaths, not with abstinence. Abstinence has failed. Well, not really. I don't believe that our culture and society and certainly the church and I do blame the church to a degree and the church is going to let down the ball here bigly if we don't uh, man up and step up and begin to give the biblical reasons not to do these type of drugs 
and to point people to our Savior who will deliver people from addiction completely. He can do it in an instant. He's done it in my life. Done it in the lives of thousands of other people. Just look up their testimonies online, on YouTube, instantly set free by the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. Sometimes he doesn't do it instantly, he does it gradually. But the Lord sets his people free. And you can say no, and you can abstain. But the culture doesn't believe in abstinence. That's obvious with the rampant abortion rate, STD rate, pregnancy rate amongst teens and unwed women. It's because our society simply punted and said, ah, people are going to have sex. What are you going to do? Let's give everybody a condom. Let's give everybody the pill. Let's have abortion mills because they're going to do it anyway. That's capitulating to the enemy. Next article. Opinion. Drug users need a safe supply that won't send them to the morgue. Well, that would be helpful. I'm not going to say that it wouldn't be helpful. We'll, we'll talk about the, the logical reasons that are going to push this into making it happen. But yeah, drug users need a safe supply. There are a lot of unscrupulous drug dealers out there that adulterate their drugs. And the reason they do that, let's say you buy a gram of, of uh, cocaine. Oh, well, let's say, look, you're a drug dealer. You, you buy an ounce of Coke. So you've got a big, big baggie there. You've got a nice big rock in there. You're going to chop that up. Well, you got an ounce, 28 grams. Actually, almost 29, but we'll just say 28 grams. So you're going to cut that. You might cut that in half and have two ounces. Now, you made your cocaine 50% weaker, but you just doubled your volume, and the addict's not going to know until they snort or shoot it up, whether it's weak, strong, good, bad, or indifferent. And you will have made your money, and nobody's going to really come back and complain. The way that complaints are dealt with in the drug world is you go back to the person who sold you the bad drugs, and you shoot them dead. You knock on the door when they open it, you go bang, and you walk away. That happens all the time. It happened to my wife's uh, cousin, Pete. Not over drugs, but somebody knocked on his door, he opened the door, shot him right in the, in the head, and walked away. A Detroit-style justice. It's sad but true. Drug users need a safe supply that won't send them to the morgue. One could argue, no, drug dealers need to be delivered so they don't abuse their bodies and souls any longer in, in our society and don't end up in the morgue. But I digress. Next article. Syringe program user survey shows stunning fentanyl surge. So they went around and uh, where they give out syringes it's a syringe program. This is, again, harm reduction. And I'm all for helping people, even people that have addictions. I, want, I don't want to see people die needlessly, and I most assuredly don't want to see them remain addicts. That's not the purpose of God for their lives. But what this survey showed when they take the used thing back and do, you know, the little blood, little drugs that are left inside there, take a look at that evaluate that the residue and they find a stunning fentanyl surge what does that mean well if the governments controlled the drugs and distributed them why there wouldn't be this stunning fentanyl surge anymore we deal with this fentanyl problem next article lack of safe supply and evidence-based care at the core of british columbia drug deaths yeah, that's the reason why drug addicts die. I would say probably 90% of the drug deaths are due to overdoses. Now, this could be very pure drugs that they didn't think were as pure. They're used to a lower grade, so they use the same amount, and they die instantly. Or they don't know what's in the drugs. So they take a small amount, but it's got fentanyl in it, and a grain of fentanyl will kill you and they die. 
yes, lack of safe supply and evidence-based care, nobody's caring for these people, and the government's not stepping in, and Canada's a huge nanny state, and we're taking lessons from them. Used to learn from California, now we learn from Canada. Neighbor to the north. It's at the core of BC drug deaths. Next article. Does Minneapolis need a place where users can inject drugs while supervised? Hmm, one neighbor studying, no neighborhood is studying this. Well, we know it's being done in Boston, Ma uh, Boston, Mass. Well, here's the next state, Minneapolis. Does, do they need a place where they can, well, supervised? What do you mean supervised? Well, Bob, that is a medically trained EMT, uh, maybe a, LPN or RN, I don't know which, which level of nursing can, can in, usually it's the doctor, but nurses can also certainly uh, provide Narcon or whatever, you know, jab some uh, adrenaline into your heart. I suppose if you, you conk out instantly, they can be there. Does Minneapolis need a place where users can inject drugs while supervised? I would say, on a Christian level, no. On a societal, earthly, worldly level, might not be a bad idea. We'll discuss this. Next article. Prohibition, privilege, and the drug apartheid. The failure of drug policy reform to address the underlying fallacies of drug prohibition. This is a conference going on in the UK. You see, there are many underlying fallacies involved in drug prohibition. And we know that the people that are arrested for drugs are by and large minority people filling our jails where white, fairly wealthy drug dealers and users end up in treatment, are given probation, don't do hard time. So there definitely is an unjust and inequitable handing down of drug sentences in the United States that I assume in England. But I like the way they say prohibition ah, doesn't work. It's a fallacy. We should not prohibit the use of drugs. Now, next article. Legalizing drugs would benefit the United States. I've got the internet address there. You can look that up and read that uh, small abstract. Now, the most notably known and, and certainly respected think tank in America, one of them, the Brookings Institute, is uh, considering, you know, people pay these eggheads and people in an ivory tower, and they go, legalization of drugs, yes or no? That's the question. And they hand them that, give them several hundred thousand dollars, say, we'll be back in eight weeks. Have a report for us. Reversing the war on drugs. A five-point plan. That's what the Brookings Institute has come up with. Their suggestion? Reverse. Reverse. Reverse course. So what do we see happening right now? Several things. A couple states went ahead and totally legalized drug abuse. Oregon's one of them. They're finding some problems with their legalization of hard drugs. And I say, as history has shown, decriminalization, decriminalizing always leads to legalizing. Here are the last two articles. Facility designed to allow people to take drugs more safely while supervised is coming to Linelli in Wales. 
so they got this mobile van. I don't have a picture of it. I can show you one. It's online. Designed to allow people to take drugs more safely while supervised. So you're in the van. You've got your EMT driver and, and hospital worker there. Shoot your drugs up. If you don't die instantly, you seem to be okay. Go not out under a tree. Next, next attic coming in there. So they've got these mobile vans that you can, hey, Adam, come on in, here, here, here's where you can, they can test your drugs. Is there any fentanyl? In, oh, there's fentanyl in that heroin. I'm sorry, don't do that. You're going to die. Or, well, that's all I've got. Uh, kind of watch me. I'll take less and get the Narcon ready. I don't know how they do it, but there you have it. The last article, Alabama lawmakers approve bill to legalize test strips to help prevent overdoses. Well, that's the baby step and the people behind the push to legalize all drugs they applaud this because this is the way that you get the nose of the camel into the tent it's baby steps we're legalizing test strips so these people that are currently using drugs at least they can find out I bought methamphetamine and that guy said me sell me some meth in this little tin foil packet let's see no there's some other crapola in this i better not shoot it or shoot it up advisedly what you gonna do if you're an addict you're an addict and when you're controlled and driven by your flesh to that degree and maybe other evil spirits operating in you you're still going to probably use that drug well which leads me to my last comments about this current push well here's some of the world's logic behind legalizing drugs and believe me they sit around and discuss this they just don't willy-nilly decide these things they've thought about it they've seen the the repercussions to our culture and society and humanity and the economy and all blah 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 well these are some of the reasonings we can't legislate moral behavior effectively so we just simply will capitulate to whatever the populace desires i could have done another presentation and given you as many if not more articles on the push to legalize prostitution around the world because again it's a perfect example of we can't legislate morality since you cannot legalize moral behavior effectively well we'll just quit trying we just won't we'll just legalize these things we'll decriminalize them and then we will legalize them because people are going to do it anyhow history has proven that people are going to use these substances regardless of the laws all of the tens of thousands of people america has in the jails because of smoking weed uh, possessing some small amount of of whatever substance cost us more than it benefits us we're not helping those people they go to jail and the jails are awash with drugs it's probably easier to get drugs in prison than on the street and it's very easy to find them on the street I'm not even in the game and haven't been in the game for decades, but I bet I could walk out on Lansing Street and, and go in some areas and just simply walk around. And before the end of the day, I bet I can find heroin, cocaine, and methamphetamine on the street in my city here, the capital of Lansing. Not going to try, but I'm sure and know that it's out there. But people are going to do these anyway we can't stop it governments are admitting the fact we cannot legislate morality hmm so why not profit from their addiction abuse and use since these people are going to use these drugs and that's obvious they've been using drugs ever since there's recorded history we understand this it's just something humanity does rightly or wrong well, they're going to use these substances. They're going to get them from somebody. 
And since it's causing a lot of death and disease and destruction, we can mitigate some of that death and disease and destruction if we sell the drugs ourselves. Because people are dying, Bob. Listener, don't you get it? Don't you care? People are dying due to adulterated drugs. Pure drugs will reduce drug overdoses due to harmful adulterants. True or false? True statement. Absolutely true. Pure drugs will reduce drug overdoses. Well, it's obvious we cannot trust the dealers on the street to provide pure drugs to the people what to do. The governments obviously and logically and reasonably must step in and step up and begin to oversee the growth, the production, the distribution, and the sale of these products. This will provide pure drugs to the users, and on the upside, as your government, we will also provide through the money received harm reduction centers, addiction centers, and a, a abstinence program and help people that want to get off drugs a way to do so. So we're just not promoting drug use and addiction they no longer will call it abuse, it's drug addiction. People have a problem, people have an addiction, but they're using drugs wisely under a doctor's eagle eye or a nurse's eagle eye. It's pure, and so they're able to maintain a functioning dose level. Now, that's the good news that they want us to understand. It's a good thing. You see, people are dying. And they're spreading disease due to using unclean needles. And they need a supervised use center, also known as a shooting gallery. You can go to shooting galleries, crackhead places where they went and smoked crack, where they weren't shooting uh, crack. That was a smokable form of cocaine. So shooting galleries offer everything. You could shoot up your heroin, you could shoot up your coke or meth smoke your crack women there and men sold their bodies for another another dose that went on in the back room or just out in public didn't matter the addicts really don't care people they're brought down to nothing so that caused a lot of std spread uh spread in in, in inner city amongst addicts almost all addicts uh, have a variety of illnesses and diseases not just their drug addictions, especially the women. Where do you think the whole AIDS and HIV thing spread so much? Not just through the gay communities. It went there initially, but it went through the IV drug users and is still going that way. And then the unpredicted uh, sex, which happens when you're high. You don't care about having a condom or not. You want your next fix. Moving on. Last article there, last comment. Legal drugs being sold through the government will, number one, keep addicts safer, pure drugs. Number two, it will stop the criminal element. You'll stop the cartels from getting all these billions of dollars and killing hundreds of thousands of people. Number three, it will add billions to the governments of the world that embrace hard drugs. And it can provide a daily dose enabling addicts to go to work, which was something England did with heroin users years ago. And it is the theory behind the methadone clinics. And believe me, those two programs, methadone clinics and the former British program of providing a maintenance dose to addicts of pure heroin, uh, were somewhat successful. And so on a take, take your biblical glasses off, which I never advise doing, but let's pretend for a minute and look at this from a worldly logic. Yes, lots of people are dying because of adulterated drugs. Give them access to pure drugs. 
not as many will die. Others will die because they're shooting too many and the drugs are pure and it kills them. They overdose that way. So, if we provide pure drugs, we provide a safe place under supervision, we can save a lot of drug addicts' lives. Now, if in those centers we also urge them, nudge, nudge, wink, wink, to get help, get treatment, you really don't want to live this way, do you? Well, a small percentage or maybe a large percentage, time will tell, will probably agree and say, you're right. I, I, I don't enjoy this slavery, and that's what it is. Others will be quite happy in their slavery, quite a few, because their flesh enjoys it. And here's a, a little known fact. If you have pure heroin, for instance, and this isn't true for other drugs, I know it's true for heroin, you can use heroin the rest of your life, every day, and live to be 90 years old. Heroin is well accepted in the body. You could take a maintenance dose and live the rest of your life without any any really downside to that other than the fact that you're extremely addicted. And to get off of it, you're going to be very, very sick, but not so much so that you will die. You can, in fact, they say getting off uh, nicotine is harder than heroin. I don't know. I was never addicted to either. Never done those drugs. Don't use nicotine. Never have. Uh, never done heroin in and of itself. Done other drugs that were no doubt cut with it back in the 70s. Uh, but it's a well-tolerated drug, apparently. So it makes sense, people, on a very humanistic, compassionate level, to keep these poor souls safe from themselves. Take, the, take a bite out of crime, provide that money back into the, the economy that's going to criminal elements, we can use that money to build uh, these addiction centers and help people to get off these drugs. Well, that's how they're going to, to present it. The fact of the matter is this. The Bible is very plain. That through sorcery, the nations are being deceived. Through the use of pharmakeia. And I believe that primarily this will, will be through the use of psychedelic drugs that will work in concert with the return and the reestablishment of the old gods back to their locations, which is also ongoing. But through the legalization of hard drugs, we will find many people drawn into addiction and degradation. And no, God doesn't approve of this. He doesn't approve of drug addiction of any form whether it's alcohol or whether it's amphetamines. Addicts are addicts, and the Lord came to set us free. And he doesn't desire his people to use these drugs. Everything people are seeking in their use of drugs can and are provided through the Lord God himself. All of the good feelings, all of the peace, all of the bliss, all of the joy, whatever it is that people are seeking and deriving from those drugs, have at their root <laughs> are found in God. They've been twisted into these substances and are mere shadows of what the Lord can provide for his people. If they will trust him and turn to him and look to him, he meets all of our needs at our very deepest core level, spirit, soul, and body. And we don't need to use any other drugs or substances. We simply need to believe in our Lord and rest and trust in his word and promises and the reality and presence of his Holy Spirit in our lives. But this is here, it is coming, and I want us to be paying attention to it. Because we've got a job, and the church is going to be dealing with the fallout from all the psychedelic drug use and all of the hard drug use. These people are going to be seeking answers. And we've got to be in a place in Christ Jesus where we can give them the answers and the power of God is available, can flow through us to set them instantly free. In Jesus' glorious name, those days and that warfare is coming upon us. Let's get ready, be prayed up, get in the word, and go out 
and share good news with people who see no hope.